Hey everyone, here's a quick video on some basic machining and accuracy tests on the DMC2. So I designed this part in Fusion 360. It's really just a random part that I made to test the DMC2 with some scrap material when I first built it. It includes round and rectangular features to measure afterwards and a 3D contoured surface and a 3D engraving to test the high speed simultaneous 3D capabilities. This test piece is machined on the top of a 2 inch by 2 inch block of 6061 aluminum, which is identical to this piece of stock material I have lying around. I'm holding it upright in the vise and using a parallel to make sure the side of the stock and the side of the vise are flush together. In the first setup in Fusion 360, I'm using a 6mm end mill to face the top down and remove the majority of the material. My work coordinate system is at the top front to left of the part, so I'll set that in the machine by using the probe for X and Y and then the height buck for the Z. Once that's set up, I can hit cycle start and let the machine do its thing. That was extremely fast. Next up is a 4mm tool that removes the remaining material and does a slower finishing pass on the perimeter of the smaller features. I do need to set the height again after changing the tool, but the X and Y positions are still saved and correct from the last operation. Once the 4mm tool is done, I'm switching to a 4mm ball end mill to finish the top curved surface here. 
I'm using a parallel toolpath with a very small step over, so that should leave a relatively smooth finish. So once again, load the tool, reprobe the Z height, and hit cycle start. After that, the last thing left to do is a chamfer of all of the edges and engrave the DMC2 logo on the curve. I'm doing this with the coolant and the cover off, just so I can get my camera close up to the machining action. This operation won't throw a lot of chips or generate much heat, so it's fine, but as a safety precaution you should never really operate the machine without the cover on. And the finished part looks great. The curved surface feels very smooth to the touch, and the individual little stepovers are pretty much impossible to feel. So now for the real test. The reason I designed this part with these features is so that I can measure them and see how accurate the X and Y axes are, as well as the combined accuracy on different angles of the protruding circular features. Starting off with the X axis measurements, so everything from right to left on the part. The rectangle is 22.6 millimeters long and 10 millimeters tall, so I'm getting just about 22.6, which is perfect, and about 10.01 on the 10 millimeter larger circle too. On the smaller 6 millimeter circle, I'm getting pretty much dead on 6 millimeters. And yes, I know these cheap calipers are not the best way to measure, but they give a pretty good indication of what's going on. Switching to the y-axis measurement now. The 10 millimeter side of the rectangle is right on 10.00. The 10 millimeter circle is about 9.99. And the 6 millimeter circle is about 5.99. Now, what I want to do is measure the diagonal across the circles because that takes combined movement of the x and y axes to cut. And as you can see, measuring both of the diagonals on the 10mm and 6mm circles are pretty much bang on target. These numbers are great, again keeping in mind that these calipers are not the best tool for this. But plus minus 0.01mm, or 4 ten thousandths of an inch, is extremely good for an average actual CNC machine shop. So we went from a stock piece of aluminum to a finished, one-sided part in just a few minutes, all on the DMC2. Hope you enjoyed the video, and see you in the next one.